So obesogens can come from quite a few different sources, and these include chemicals in pesticides, high fructose corn syrup and pure sugar, animal protein, tap water, and some other everyday items as well. So let's take a quick look at each one of them so we can understand how we can avoid them. As far as chemicals and pesticides go, the best plan of attack there is to wash all of your vegetables and fruits on your day off and make sure that there's no residue left on them. For high fructose corn syrup and sugar, well, the best scenario here is to try and avoid both of these things as much as you can. Now, during the week, that's going to be easy to do because the food that you're eating doesn't have these items as ingredients. On your off day, what you need to think about is enjoying meals that are still made with whole foods as much as possible. But I don't want you to get too freaked out about this. It really is a diet where people are eating high fructose corn syrup and sugar every day that leads to very, very big problems. What you do need to be aware of, though, is that sugar and high fructose corn syrup actually act on your brain and they affect the hunger area and also the reward area of your brain. So what that means is that when you eat some of it, then you actually feel like eating more. And this leads to a vicious cycle, which explains why so many people like eating lots and lots of sweet foods. With animal protein, unfortunately, sometimes obesogens are carried along with the animal protein in the fat that sits right next to it. Now, especially with meat that's fed grain or corn, you'll find marbling in the meat. And that marbling is actually a sign of insulin resistance in the muscles. So if you can, get grass-fed red meat, and you'll find that actually that meat is substantially different. The other important thing to know about meat is if it's wrapped in industrial cling wrap, that there are likely to be some chemicals there which will actually seep into the animal fat. And so the best defense for you there is to actually shop at a butcher that wraps their meat in paper or buy meat which isn't sitting up against industrial cling wrap. Now the next source is water from the tap, and that sounds pretty alarming, so I just want to explain this and explain how you can protect yourself. Now the reason water from the tap can contain obesogens is because pesticides can enter the water table if you're anywhere near any kind of farming. And there's a couple of specific pesticides that are well known to affect things like thyroid function and also fat cell production, so obviously they're best avoided. Now the best thing to do here is to use an activated carbon filter to filter the water that comes out of your tap. It's as simple as that, and you'll be drinking pure, clean water that's free from obesogens. Now the last place we want to watch out for obesogens is in everyday items. And there's a few different chemicals which are called BPA, PFOA, and PVC. Now BPA can be found in cans, and the worst foods to buy in cans in fact are acidic and fatty foods. So things like canned tomatoes and also canned fatty fish like salmon tend to have more BPA that actually leaches into the foods. BPA is also in some of those hard water bottles. And so you want to avoid the plastic numbers 7 and 3. And you can find them in a little triangular symbol on the bottom of those containers. Lastly, BPA will show up in plastic food containers that you might get from a takeaway store or a fast food restaurant or you might also buy as a kind of a storage thing that you can put in your fridge. So never get them warm, never get them hot, and definitely don't put them in the microwave. Because by doing that, you're actually promoting the BPA to leach out of the plastic and into the food that you're about to eat. Next, we have PFOA. Now, PFOA is part of the non-stick coating that makes it so easy to cook eggs for breakfast in the morning. Now, I personally love non-stick pans, and I haven't given up using my non-stick pan, what I have done is started paying particular attention to if it's scratched. And if it's scratched at all, if that surface has any imperfections, then I'll consider getting rid of that pan much more early than I used to. The other place to look for PFOA is microwave popcorn. And for this, I can just simply recommend making popcorn the good old fashioned way instead of using microwave popcorn. Finally, PVC contains chemicals which can lower testosterone and lower metabolism. And this can be in anything vinyl, but particularly things that heat up. So one classic example is a shower curtain, because it's in a heated environment that's also a moist environment, and you actually ingest a lot of the PVC chemicals from that. Now PVC is also in that industrial cling wrap that I mentioned, and that's why it's a good idea to stay away from it. The last thing to look out for is air fresheners, because they contain a substance called phthalate, and phthalate 
is what helps the fragrance to go through the air. So anything marked with a fragrance is actually carried by phthalates and they can actually lower testosterone and lower metabolism. So it's best to steer clear of them. So that's obesogens in a nutshell. And now I think you know everything that you need to know about them and also how to avoid them. 